The general strike was voted on by Occupy Oakland's General Assembly after a violent crackdown on protesters. U.S. Marine veteran Scott Olson remains hospitalized following the attack. The police have promised an investigation, and yesterday the Oakland Police Officers Association wrote an open letter to citizens saying they too are the 99 percent. The statement said they are also fighting for better working conditions and were confused by Oakland Mayor Gene Kwan's mixed messages, including ordering them to clear out encampments last week and later ordering all police to work despite giving all the other city workers the day off to participate in the strike. Oakland isn't the only city where police have attacked Occupy encampments, and some are questioning leaders' decisions to use force on nonviolent protesters. For a look at the legal aspect of the police response to the Occupy protests, we turn to Heidi Bogosian. She's executive director for the National Lawyers Guild. Attorneys with the Guild have been working closely with Occupy protesters in a number of cities across the country. Heidi Bogosian, welcome to FSRN. Thank you for having me. We've seen police action in several locations, arrests in Denver, use of uh, chemical spray beatings in New York, also force in Boston. There's the possible use of flash grenades or rubber bullets still under investigation in Oakland. What is the legal basis for when police can use force like this, especially against unarmed protesters? Well, generally, most of the practices that we've seen Uh, as you mentioned, with use of so-called less lethal weapons uh, and things like trapping hundreds of protesters in netting and then arresting them, those are unconstitutional, and they're actually not appropriate responses by law enforcement. Some have been challenged in court, and I think that that's playing out now in the Occupy movements. We're seeing how different municipalities react. Well, the response has been different in different places. This week, a U.S. district judge in Tennessee ruled that officials had to stop enforcing new rules. Those rules included uh, requiring permits and restricting the times of the protests, and those rules had led to arrests. What does this really mean for other locations and other protest sites? Well, I should first note that the practices you just mentioned, such as um, having restrictive ordinances that um, that sometimes single out protesters or that give local authorities discretion to decide who and what can protest when and where, a lot of those are unconstitutional as well. And so we're very pleased to see these being challenged. It does uh, impact, I should say, Those court decisions vary according to the jurisdiction, Uh, but I think it sends a positive signal to other locations and other police departments or or local mayor's offices and city councils about uh, the efforts that some places use, we think, to actually impede the exercise of free speech. The attention on police treatment of protesters through the Occupy movements is shedding a spotlight on law enforcement right now. And it gives us an opportunity to see how different departments are are respecting the First Amendment right to take to the streets. That First Amendment right is, is the right to peaceably assemble and to protest guaranteed in the Constitution. Protesters have invoked that repeatedly, uh, especially when confronted with police pressure. Now, on the other hand of that, government officials have said uh, the use of public resources for this or uh, threats to safety have justified certain action. Talk about the right to assembly and how that's played out in this. I think what's unusual about this particular movement is that it started in New York and caught on so quickly. It's something that people can relate to. And and part of that is the right to take to a public park or a public space and to express disapproval with uh, financial and government policies right now. Everyone can relate to this. That has in turn helped to educate people around the country about the fact that they do have a right to go assemble in a public space. The problem comes when police engage in rhetoric that says all protesters are bad or some protesters are bad and they create a dynamic between good and bad protesters. Heidi Bogosian is executive director for the National Lawyers Guild. She joined us from New York. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you.